Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. I hope you're all well wherever you are, whatever you're up to. I'm Lauren and in my video this week I'm going to be chatting to you about the sewing machine that I use at home, which is this one here, and I'm going to do a little bit of a review about it. Um, it is the Brother Innovus NVQ and just to be like really transparent right from the beginning um, the machine is actually currently on loan to me for free from Brother and that is that has been arranged through my local sewing machine shop which is Frank Nutt in Kings Heath and I've had the machine for about nine or ten months now so I've been using it to make lots of things which I'll chat to you about more soon and if you did want to buy it new it costs um, £2,000 basically it's like £1,999 um, so what I've done is I've done like a written version of this review and chat about my machine on my blog as well so I'll put a link to that in the description and I'll also put a link to where you can buy the machine from too if you like it I've used Brother sewing machines for over 10 years now and I've used various different models so the first one that I had was one that I, that I purchased um, it, yeah, it was like just about 10 years ago, I think it was an anniversary edition um, and it was quite small and but it did sort of what I needed it to do and then since I opened the shop I've used various models of Brother sewing machines because I also have a set of them in the studio where I teach sewing workshops to above my shop and um, they are a different model to this one. They are the NV1300 so they're, they're, yeah, they're a more sort of mid-range model of sewing machine, whereas I would say this is a bit more of a, a high-range model. But what I'm going to do in the video in, in terms of chatting you through the machine is I've sort of gone through the list of like features that the machine has, or let's like sort of listed that it has, like if you were to go onto a website and it would list all of these things that it can do and kind of chat about my experience of using them. And then some people have also asked me like specific questions too. I do use it mostly for dressmaking. So I'm going to be honest, my review is probably going to be slightly more biased towards its uses for dressmaking because that's just what I saw more of. And um, I probably can't comment fully on the, the practicalities and usefulness of it in quilting, although I have made one quilt on it. It was quite a simple quilt. So I, I you know, I quilted like patchworked everything together and then I quilted it too. Um, but yeah, most of the projects that I do are dressmaking. So first of all, in terms of the features that it's got, um, you'll see just behind me here, it's got this really large touchscreen LCD sort of um, display on it and that's how you select all of your stitches and it's really easy to navigate so you just like press on the different stitches that you want it's got loads of different stitches and um, it does also have like a little guide as well little help guide so it's got an operation manual so you can just look up like what all the different things do like what all the buttons do if you're not sure what a button does it just sort of explains it so so it's really easy to use you can see it's you know it's quite intuitive it's also got a sewing guide as well so it tells you how to actually do different things as well which is quite good so yeah say you wanted to do buttonholes then then it talks you through like the different buttonhole settings that it's got just for example so it's quite good because you don't always have to get your big manual out every time you want to use it you can just sort of have a look on here so the next thing is the huge stitch selection. It has over 470 different stitches. Gotta say, I've not used all of them. I'm gonna to talk to you about the most common ones that I use. A lot of them are decorative. So it's got the, the utility stitches, which are like the kind of basic ones here. And then it also has um, these decorative ones as well. So you can like just have a little look at them and then you can see scroll down and then you can see all the different ones it's got so there's loads and loads of different embroidery sort of decorative stitches it's also got lots of buttonholes i was mentioning them before so lots of different types of buttonholes that you might need it can also sew on buttons too and then you can also do the alphabet with it as well so that's the alphabet function there it's got different fonts and it's got like uppercase and lowercase and punctuation and everything too. So you can just um, like you can just type in your name and then it saves it all. So you don't have to do it letter by letter. So if you wanted to like type out your whole name, then yeah, it's really, really, really easy to use for that. The other feature it's got in terms of actual stitches is the My Custom Stitch feature which is a trademark feature and it's basically where you can like design your own sort of stitch 
I've got to be honest, I've not actually used that a part of it because it's just got so many other stitches and also I use it mostly for dressmaking. I think it's more like a decorative thing that you might use that a custom stitch for. But if you do incorporate a lot of that sort of work into your project, then it might be something that you find useful. The next feature it's got that I absolutely love is the automatic needle threader. So I'm going to show you how that works now. I've got a thread here ready to thread up. It is also really easy to thread up. It's got like lines with arrows and it sort of tells you where to go. Um, but it's quite, if you've threaded a sewing machine before, then it's quite sort of intuitive what you need to do. Um, this bit here is the needle threader. So you just have to like place your thread over the top of that, cut it at the side, and then to thread the actual needle, you press this button here, and then just let the machine do its job, basically, and then you'll see that it has been threaded. Now, when you do use the automatic needle threader, the one thing I'll say that you have to sort of get used to is that you, if you're used to using the foot the foot control with like a manual lever at the side or back you can't do that immediately after you've threaded the needle you have to lower the foot by pressing that button and then manually lift the foot back up again and then you can use that lever so it just depends sort of what you're used to and um, if you are going to use that needle threader function which is really good to save you having to try and thread it by eye the next feature is the pivot function so the machine will whenever you take your foot off the pedal the needle will always stop in the fabric you can change that so it doesn't but just when you turn it on it does that anyway but i actually find that really useful that it helps you to sort of control the fabric a little bit and good when you're turning corners but what you can also do is set the machine up so that it automatically lifts the foot up whenever you stop sewing. So you press this little button here, which is on the touch screen. And then when you actually come to sew something, so if I just do like a little bit of sewing just now, you'll see that as soon as I take my foot off the pedal and stop, then the foot also lifts up on its own as well. So then you can pivot it. So that's just like another little sort of feature that is built in. The other feature that it's got, which I totally love, is the thread cutter. So when you're finished and you want to take your fabric out and because you've stopped sewing it, you just press this scissor button here and it will lift the needle up to the highest position. It also cuts the threads and then it's lifted the foot up for me as well. So then I can literally just pull my fabric out and I've not got those long thread tails at the back, which is brilliant. So I really, the needle threader and the thread cutter, two features I really love. They aren't exclusive to this machine. You can get more mid-range brother machines that also both have those features. Then it has also got this handy accessory compartment here, which there's meant to be a seam ripper in there, but I just, um, have it somewhere else just now and then that's just a nice little way to store all the feet and then you can lift that out and store more stuff underneath it's got storage at the side and it's also got a bit of storage at the back as well in this little pocket here so you can just like keep other bits and pieces in so quite handy to sort of keep everything together then you can see that it's got this really lovely long arm here which is 11 inches, which is quite a bit longer than most machines. It means that more sort of basic machines, you're kind of like in this sort of area here, there's just not that much space under the, to the right hand side of the needle at all. So it's really good if you're doing it like a bulky thick project or you are quilting and you're not having to sort of squish your project through a smaller space. So it does just feel very sort of roomy and spacious, which is good. And um, the other thing that I noticed, which was one of like the first things that I noticed as soon as I turned the machine on, is it stitches really, really quickly. So you can alter the speed of it. That's what this little sort of slider is here. This basically sets like a speed limit on the speed that the machine will go and affects the sensitivity of the foot pedal. So if you've got it somewhere like in the middle or you know at the slowest speed, whatever, it doesn't matter how hard you put your foot on the pedal, it will not go above a certain speed. So just to show you the difference, if I put it on the slowest speed just now and then do a little bit of sewing, then, so this is my foot flat on the pedal and that is how fast it goes. You can see how slow it is. But then if you, Let's whack it up to the top you can still go slow so if you just put your foot on the pedal a little bit 
it still goes slow, but now if I put my foot right to the floor, you'll see how fast it goes. It is really super fast. Um, and I really noticed the difference in that fast speed compared to the other brother sewing machines that I've used before. So it's good if you are doing a quilt, you know, your quilting, because you've got like big long lines to do if you're quilting all your layers together. Or if you're just sewing a garment that's got like a longer straight seam, it's just much, much quicker. I, I tend to find that generally with dressmaking, it's about control. So you would only go really fast if you felt like you can control it. But I like going fast, so I really like that speed. And um, the other thing that's that I've found really useful as well is that it's got this lock stitch button too. So instead of doing a little reverse at the start and end of your stitching, which um, say you were doing top stitching on something and you were using thicker thread and you did a little reverse, the thread would look quite clumpy, right? Because it's like top stitch thread. So what you can do is this lock stitch button here. And if you just press on that, it basically just sews on the spot for a few stitches and that kind of knots the thread and sort of locks it off. And it just looks a bit neater of, of for your stitching on the top of the fabric. So yeah, that's quite useful. As I said, if you're using top stitching thread and you don't want to see the little reverse, um, or sometimes I've used it if maybe like when I'm starting or ending a bit of sewing and there's maybe more seam allowances and the foot might just find it hard to reverse back over it in a neat way, then yeah you can just sort of stitch on the spot and um, the other thing that it does which is which i've found really useful is that it will tell you when the bobbin is about to run out so and there's like a little warning that just comes up on on the machine here so if you try to sew like say i just took the, the bobbin out just now and then i tried to sew then it would say this is what it looks like here the bobbin thread's almost empty and a little unhappy face because we all know how annoying it is when you're sewing and your bobbin thread runs out so that won't happen anymore which is really good and um, so that's pretty useful again especially if you're doing a bigger project where you're using a lot of thread and you know that you're likely to run out of bobbin thread and um, it also has this feature called the eye caps feature and basically, I'm going to try and get the wording right on this from my nose. It helps to ensure a consistent stitch length on all fabric thicknesses and it keeps the presser foot pressure constant regardless of the thickness of the fabric. So it gives you a uniform stitch across even when there's like uneven surfaces. You don't really know this is like happening. It's not really like something that you can see. You can only in the sense that when you look at your stitching, if you are sewing over different thicknesses, you know, maybe there's more seam allowances in certain parts of what you're sewing than others, for example, the, the, stitch, the stitching is really good and the machine can totally cope with it. I've sewn everything on this machine from like really lightweight silk fabric to like a thick woolen fabric. I've made a pair of jeans on it as well with denim and you know what it's like, going through lots of layers and certain parts of that too and it's totally coped with it all obviously having the right needle helps in those situations when you're sewing with specific fabrics but yeah i found that it does just give really nice stitching whatever sort of thickness of fabric you're sewing the other thing which you might have noticed is the lighting situation on this machine it is a really big massive sort of lighting area here and I actually used to have like a little desk lamp that I would have close to my machine here. So if I was sewing in the evening, then I could put that on just to have some more light and I find I don't need it anymore. It's, it's just really, really bright. Um, and I think because it's got this sort of um, transparent kind of thing around it here, then the light can just sort of reflect over everywhere. So I found, I found that really good as well. You can adjust the brightness. I've not worked out how to do that yet because I just like it bright. Um, but you can adjust the brightness too if you felt like it was too bright for whatever reason. It also has um, what's called a seven point feed. So actually the feed dogs that are on the machine, like they're the little sort of grips that sit underneath the foot of the machine there. They normally rotate round like this. So then they grip your fabric and that's what feeds the fabric through as well as rotating like front to back like that they can actually go side to side as well they can move in other directions which is pretty cool so it means that it can feed the fabric in different directions the only time that i've sort of really noticed that or 
I guess found it useful so far in terms of what I actually sew is that I was use I was using it to make little name labels for my daughter's school stuff and at the the size of the stitching I could stitch was just so much taller because the machine can move the fabric like this way as well as forward and back so it was quite good for that. The next thing that it has is an, it's called an independent bobbin winder so there's basically like two little spokes here that thread can go on to so say you were you had like your your machine threaded up but you needed a new bobbin and you had an extra spool of thread then you can put your bobbin onto there and then you put your thread onto this little bit and then you can just use these little guides here to wind the bobbin round and then yeah it just means that you can wind the bobbin without unthreading all of that which is quite useful and um, then when you come to thread the bobbin too you can actually adjust the speed of which it winds the bobbin because sometimes you might want to do that and um, and then yeah you can you can wind the bobbin that way too so that's quite cool saves you unthreading all of that it also has two USB ports which are just at the side um, so that you can connect up to the computer to get updates. You can also connect a mouse to it as well, like if you prefer to use a mouse rather than the touchscreen. Um, I haven't done that yet but you know, option there if you wanted to. Um, it also has a knee lift as well which is what goes into this little circle here. I actually find that I don't, I don't know, I don't really use that. The knee lift operates the foot of the machine here, it'll lift it up and down. So you can just like use your knee to the side. I just, I'm just like so in the habit of using my hands, you know, you just like stick to what you know. I just prefer to sort of do it that way manually. Um, but yeah, you can have that option of having the knee lift if you want. So now I'm going to run through some of the questions that I have been asked in specific in relation to this machine. Um, if you do have any other questions which you feel like I've not covered in this video, then you can ask them in the comments below and I shall try to answer as quickly as I can. If you want quite a quick response, um, then you can email my shop because um, I've got staff that manage an email address for me there all the time. Um, it's info at guthrie-ganny.co.uk but I'll put a note of that in the description to the video anyway. But one of the first questions that I got asked was what stitches do you most commonly use? So because I use the machine mostly for dressmaking, it is just the regular plain old straight stitch that I use the most. So in this machine, when the needle is orientated to the left hand side of the foot, which is where it is just now, that's what makes all of these guide marks here accurate. So if you're going to use these markings here to line up your seam allowance, for example, then you gotta make sure that the needle is in the middle position. So that's probably like the most common one that I use. And then I also use the straight stitch with the needle in the middle position. So you can just select it there and then the needle jumps over. If I'm doing any top stitching or under stitching or, or, some, or basting sometimes, if I've got to do some basting stitches, say for gathers and they need to be a bit closer to the edge of the fabric, then I'll put the needle position in the middle. Um, so it's quite useful to be able to sort of switch really easily between that just by selecting different stitches there. Um, the next probably most common one that I use because I sew a lot with stretchy jersey fabric or like sweatshirting fabric, as I use the stretch stitch, which is this one here. So that's good for sewing seams and stretch garments. And then you can also use it for hemming as well. The default length of that stretch stitch is 2.5 millimeters. I usually sew my seams on a three, um, three millimeter length. And then I usually for top stitching in a stretch stitch, I'll put it up to three and a half. It does have other stretch stitch options as well. It's got that, this one, which is the triple stretch stitch. So it just looks more like a straight line of stitching, but it does stretch too. It uses quite a bit more thread. Um, so there are other options. There's just like a regular zigzag stitch too, which of course will stretch and you can change the settings of that. Um, I also just use the normal foot for sewing stretch fabric too. Someone asked me that if you use a walking foot for jersey fabric, but I don't. I just use the normal foot that's on the sewing machine. And then in terms of other stitches, as I showed you before, it does have loads of those embroidery stitches, um, 
which you can select from. They're really easy to sort of look through. And I've done a sample of what a few different ones look like. So they're quite good if you're, you know, if you're sort of looking for an embellishment or you want to put something on a hem or I just haven't used them yet, but I have used the, the lettering, the alphabet, which I showed you before. Um, so yeah, there's like these different fonts and then upper and lower case as well. So it's quite good for doing names on things. Then in terms of the needles that I actually use with this machine, I always use the Prim needles, which I stock in the shop and they do all the different ones. So depending on what type of fabric you're sewing with, you would then change what needle you're using. I do actually have a separate video and a blog post that is all about selecting the right needle for your project and your fabric. Um, so I can link to that as well in the description of the video. So if you want to know a little bit more specifically about needles, then you can find out more about that. But it's just, they're just like normal needles that fit in the machine and they're really easy to change as well. You just unscrew this little bit at the side and the needle drops out. So you don't need any. There is a tool that tightens that if you find it hard to get grip on that little black bit. Um, but I usually tend to just try and pince it and tighten it, tighten it as tight as I can with my fingers. Um, the next thing that I got asked a lot about was buttonholes and is it good for buttonholes? I've sewn buttonholes on um, a really lightweight viscose fabric for a shirt and it was really good for that. I've also sewn a buttonhole on a waistband of a pair of jeans so that was going through a lot of layers of denim, totally fine with that as well and then I have also tested it on some woolen fabric too. In terms of how to actually set it up for buttonholes it's pretty easy you have to get this buttonhole foot out of the machine here and I find that this foot is quite a sturdy one because it's got metal bits. The other brother machines that I've used before they're all just plastic the buttonhole feet but this just feels a little bit more sturdy. So you then put your button in the top part of the foot just there and then it sets the size of the buttonhole for that you need to make for your size of button and then you can just drop the normal foot off and then attach this one back on. So it's really easy to change the feet. You don't need any tools to do it. It's just a case of lifting and lowering the presser foot down. Then there's a little buttonhole lever that comes down at the side there to sit behind that. And then you can select your buttonhole stitch. So I probably most commonly use this one here, which is just like the regular rectangular one. I would use that on if I was doing like a little blouse or whatever. And then the ones that have got the, the sort of rounded tip, the little keyhole one, I would tend to use if the button had quite a thick shank. So when you put a button, a jeans button on a pair of jeans, then the shank of that button tends to be quite thick. So then it's better if the buttonhole was rounded at the end just to deal with the, the shank of that button. And then you just, the, it'll always sort of start and work backwards when you do the buttonhole. So you have to just make a, make a little mark or you could put a little pin in where you want your buttonhole to start. And then line it up with where those little red markers are on the foot of the machine. And then you just put your foot on the pedal and it does the job for you. So. So you still have your hands on the fabric as it's sewing it to sort of guide it but the machine will kind of move it forward and back and yet yeah, be able to do its thing and then you get a lovely buttonhole which is very nice and then I'll just do a little test on a on a bit of wool as well so you can see what it's like so that's some that's a little bit of wool there that has also been interfaced and then if we just get that underneath the foot of the machine and then give that a go So yeah, as you can see, totally worked, no probs on that wool too. And then this is a really lovely lightweight viscose fabric and we can give it a go on that as well. I've not interfaced this, which you probably would do if it was an actual garment, but it's just so that you can see the difference of what it's like with lots of different fabrics. So 
So easy peasy, done that as well. It really can cope with any type of fabric and it does, I think it does really nice buttonholes. It doesn't cut the hole open for you, unfortunately. You still have to do that yourself. <laughs> but otherwise, it's really good on lots of different fabrics. Um, someone asked me what makes this one better than other brother machines that I've used. Obviously, it's much more expensive. I would say from a dressmaker's point of view, remember I mostly use it for dressmaking, um, the main things that I've kind of noticed are the speed and how fast it goes, that it is really like heavy and sturdy and you just feel like you can tackle anything with it. The lighting, significantly brighter than the other ones before. This space is just huge. You just feel like you've got so much space, which is great. You just feel like you've got no limits really, like you can sew anything. Um, the needle threader, because it works with a button as opposed to like a lever at the side, which is what I've been used to on other machines, just a lot smoother to use. Um, and obviously it's got all the stitches as well, but the other machine, other brother machines I've used have had lots of stitches too. But overall, I would say it does just feel like, feels quite special to be able to use a really big machine like this. And I've really enjoyed it. I do think it's really good. Um, in terms of how much use it actually gets, some so on some weeks I'm literally using the sewing machine every day. I do do a lot of sewing. Other weeks it might be like two to three times a week, but you know, I'm still using it quite a lot. Um, even though it does vary. So it has had quite a bit of use over the past nine, 10 months. And it's not, you know, it's not broken or anything. It's not had any problems. Everything's been totally fine. And I've just, you know, the more that I've sewn with it, the more I've sort of learned different things that it can do. And um, in terms of who I think it's best suited for, I would say if you were like a total, total beginner, then it might seem a bit overwhelming. Um, but then having said that, it does have the little help guide and the control panel, which is really easy to use. So if you were less experienced, you might find that useful because you can just kind of look stuff up really quickly on there while you're just sitting at your sewing machine. Um, but overall, I would say it's, it's good for somebody who's probably like more intermediate to advanced, who does a range of different dressmaking projects, but also might like patchwork and quilting as well. So you can make the use of that extra long arm. But yeah, overall, it's really, it's really slick, it's really smooth, it's got loads of neat features and once you sort of get used to them and learn how they work, then you think, oh my goodness, how did I ever sew without a machine being able to do this? Um, so I hope you found that useful. As I said before, if you've got any questions, then just let me know and I shall try to answer. Um, and then, as I said in the beginning, I'll put links to the blog post that goes with this video and then also a link of where you can get the machine too. But thanks so much for watching guys. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, then just remember to hit subscribe so you don't miss out on the next video. I've got a new fabrics video coming up very soon of lots of lovely new stuff that's arrived in my shop. So um, I know those ones are always popular. So hope, hopefully you'll be looking forward to that. Um, but yeah, thanks guys. I'll see you soon. Bye.